prayer of blessed Paul the Apostle to the Colossians. Brethren, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, you must put on heartfelt mercy, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. Bear with one another and forgive whatever grievances you have against each other. Forgive just as the Lord has forgiven you. And over all these, put on love, which binds them together and makes them perfect. Let the peace of Christ rule over your hearts, for as members of one body you have been called to that peace. Be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you with all its richness. Instruct and admonish one another with perfect wisdom. With heartfelt gratitude, sing to God's psalms, hymns and inspired songs and whatever you do in word or in work do everything in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him let us stand for the holy gospel a continuation of the holy gospel according to saint luke when jesus was 12 they made their customary trip to jerusalem for the feast when they were returning at the end of the feast, the child Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem and known to his parents. Thinking that he was in the company, they continued their journey for a day, looking for him among their relatives and acquaintances. Not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his intelligence and answers. When they saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? You see that your father and I have been searching for you in sorrow. And he said to them, What prompted you to search for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? And they did not understand what he said to them. Then they went back with them to Jerusalem, to Nazareth and remained obedient to them. His mother kept all these things in her heart, and Jesus progressed in wisdom and age and favor before God and men. Please be seated. So, dear friends, here are a few announcements. <clears throat> Our Masses this week are back to normal, 6.15 in the morning and 6 o'clock in the evening. On Wednesday, our usual perpetual health novena. However, tomorrow evening will be our monthly Requiem Mass. So please drop your pious list of souls here at our sacristy mailbox or email them to us, olvcmanila.gmail.com before tomorrow evening, 6 p.m. Okay. On Friday, we will commemorate our Lord's baptism. On Saturday, the 14th of January, in the evening, will be the regular third order meeting and conference. Next Sunday, however, is the feast of our Senor Santo Nino. And just like last Christ the King, Last October, we will have a short procession just around the block after the 9 o'clock morning Mass next Sunday. Next month, there will be confirmations on February 12 by Bishop Philae. So the Legion of Mary is now taking the registration of the candidates. And the candidates, she will be giving you a reviewer for your written and oral exams on the 4th of February. So lastly, thank you very much for your continued support and cooperation. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear friends, last Friday we contemplated the Holy Family at Bethlehem receiving the three Magi kings. Today, we jump 12 years afterwards. We look at them this time at the Holy House of Nazareth. Come to think of it, there is no place on earth holier than that little home of Nazareth. 
were the holiest persons, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, lived for almost 30 years. So let us briefly reflect on their persons. Saint Joseph, the head and father of the Holy Family, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the ideal wife and true mother of God, and of course, our Lord Jesus Christ, their divine child, in order to pattern our family after them. You see, no matter how grandiose a house is, but a house is just a building, a home, it's when its inhabitants are united together in charity. Charity makes an ordinary house into a home. And any house can decay. After five, ten years, you have to repeat, repair it. But not a Catholic home. Now the foundation of a Catholic home is precisely the holy sacrament of matrimony. Meaning, it takes three to fall in love, not just two. The man, the woman, and Jesus Christ. If our Lord is not the foundation, then there is no firm foundation in that relationship. And this is the first lesson from the Holy Family. The Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph were truly married. <clears throat> Most theologians are of the opinion that theirs, theirs was the first Catholic sacrament of marriage. And it was a virginal marriage to protect Our Lady's body consecrated and our Lord who is the Virgin of Virgins. So, although marriage is a sacrament, nevertheless, consecrated virginity is even better. However, with the sacramental grace of matrimony, the couple are enabled, given the graces, to fulfill their general duties towards their children, which is to love them and to give them physical and spiritual education. Yes, dear friends, God instituted marriage for the procreation and education of children. From the beginning, the Lord had created one Adam for one Eve, one Eve for one Adam, but never Adam and Steve. Never. It was Adam and Eve. Now the second purpose of marriage is subordinate, not equal, but subordinate to the first. And that is the mutual love and support of spouses. You see, it is God who decides how many and to whom to give children. So, the ideal Catholic family consists of a father, a mother, and children. Not like today, a daddy, a mommy, and a pet. Whether it is cats or dogs, and then they call themselves fur parents. But are they really human parents? Obviously not, by their four children. Anyway, in St. Joseph, we see the perfect human father who fulfilled his duties of guiding his wife and child, providing them sufficient food, clothing, and maintenance and administering their family property wisely. See, St. Joseph, come to look at it, was the least in the dignity in the Holy Family. But it was to him 
that God the Father revealed His will, not directly to Jesus nor to Mary. That is why He brought them from Nazareth to Bethlehem and then to escape Herod from Bethlehem to Egypt and then back to Nazareth. Most probably, if we look at there, it was in Joseph who received and administered the gifts of the three magis. But most of all, Saint Joseph led their family prayers and brought them, Jesus and Mary, to the temple regularly. That is why Saint Luke recorded two instances. Our Lord's presentation with Our Lady's purification, we will celebrate it on February the 2nd, as well as today's Gospel, when our Lord was 12 years old. Alas, unfortunately, my dad was far from perfect. Yes, he did not lead our family prayers. It was either my Lola or my mom. Nonetheless, still remember, it was my dad who wakes us up early in the morning and says, Go to Sunday Mass. And he never complained, bringing us to churches, visiting shrines, and even cemeteries. When I was still assigned in Africa, whenever I came here back to the Philippines for vaca vacations, my dad would always bring me to light some candles at the local shrine of the Verhen de Kuta in Osamis. And then we will visit the cemetery where his parents were buried. Today, it's my kuya in Osamis who visit and light candles regularly at our parents' grave. See, the house can decay, but not a Catholic home. Our Lady, she was the ideal wife, and of course the best of mothers. She fulfilled her maternal duties of obedience to her husband, careful attention at the home, and the education of children. We have heard in our gospel with what sorrow and solicitude Mary looked for his lost son. But when she found him, she did not put herself first. She said, son, why have you done this to us? You see, your father and I have been searching for you in sorrow. Truly, the Queen of Heaven, the Mother of God, she submitted herself and observed the Catholic hierarchy within the family. Yes, it's not just in the church, even at the home there is a hierarchy. The husband is the head. The wife is the heart. Yes, ladies, your husbands are not perfect just like my dad. Agree or disagree? Of course you will agree. But please, don't undermine their authority before your children and neighbors. You may have your own work. You may have your own career. But don't forget, ladies, your first duties is at home, not in the office. Now, if God gave you children, do you know that the education of children begins not even in a Catholic school? No. Once your child is four months old inside your womb and got its own five senses, their education begins not even in a Catholic school. It would be too late. See, that's the primary thing. Now, what about those of you, dear ladies, who do not have children? Well, don't worry. God will compensate you with nieces and nephews, or even with your priests, brothers, and altar servers around. See, just like the holy women who followed and assisted Jesus and his disciples. God will compensate you with spiritual children. Now what about the children now? 
Well, thanks to the pretended rights of children by the Masonic World Health Organization, children today are too much entitled and demanding. Gimme, 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 gimme. No. A person has rights only if he or she has duties. It is our duties and our obligation that gives us rights to acquire or do something. Otherwise, we have no rights at all. So, the fundamental right of a child is to live from the first instant of his or her conception and then to be grateful and to receive whatever is given by his or her parents. But most of all, and this is what the world does not want to know, the right of the child is to become an adopted child of God in the sacrament of baptism, not to be aborted. Now, generally speaking, the duties of children are simple. Love, reverence, and obedience to their parents. Love because children are the fruits of their parents' love. Obedience, reverence first, since they owe, we owe our very life to our parents. Obedience, that is, to do what is commanded them, provided it is not sinful. You see, obedience is the virtue of the will, not of the intellect. Okay? So, older children around here, okay? Even if you are not convinced of your parents' reason, but as long as what is commanded is not sinful, alas, then we have to obey. As long as it is not sinful, okay? We don't have to argue always with our parents, but we can always explain ourselves humbly and respectfully. But parents, careful, learn also from your older children. They're not puppets. They have their mind also. They have different experience from yours. And yes, each one of us can learn from each other's experience. Remember, in the family, we are teammates, not rivals. In the family, we are teammates, we are not rivals. And so, all their children are still living in their parents' house. If you have now your own job, salary, etc., then you must also help contribute to the upkeep of the home. Yes, buy some groceries, pay the electric or water bills, etc. This is how we imitate our Lord who went back with Mary and Joseph to Nazareth and remained obedient to them. Therefore, the Holy Family is the model and the cause of the sanctity of our families. The Holy Sacrament of Matrimony is the foundation of a Catholic home. Its first purpose is the procreation and education of children, its second and subordinate purpose is the mutual love and help of spouses. And so, in St. Joseph, we see the perfect father and husband who guided and protected the divine child and his virgin mother, providing them with sufficient food, clothing, and maintenance, and administering their property wisely. In the Blessed Virgin Mary, we behold the ideal wife and the best mother who gave due obedience to her husband, who takes care of the little home of Nazareth and helps in educating the human intellect of the child Jesus. In our Lord, we have the perfect child, loving, respectful, and obedient. You see, we don't have to look for sanctity anywhere else. Just as our human natural life begins in the family, so our supernatural life will develop authentic sanctity 
also begins in our family. If it's not there, it is nowhere to be found. And so may the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph help us to imitate their virtues so that with them we may one day have a grand and everlasting family reunion in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.